Yeah, everyone can knock 10% off their, their best time down somewhere. <laughs> I was like, rubbish. And um, so we started having to get that. And it, lo and behold, it's possible if you think. I should have brought a fabric softener bottle to wee into in the middle of the night because <laughs> it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was not ideal. <laughs> Definitely for me, a track walk is like essential. I was way happier. Mm -hmm. You know, like habits... Uh, you know they're like inertia it's like once you kind of get the ball rolling on something it's easy to keep keep them going it's that it's the change that's hard all right we're back with the downtime goes downhill team it's been a little while since the last race of the season uh, i'm feeling a lot brighter which if you if you listen to that episode i don't think i sounded on top of the world so it's nice to be back and having a bit of energy and um, we're going to sit down and chat about what we've learned from a year of racing downhill and um, we'll chat a little bit about some of the gear we use as well highs and lows of that um, and we'll start i think with the kind of what we've learned stuff and ben we'll start with you because earlier on you sent over a little process document on our <laughs> like team signal group um and you'd laid that out and i'm impressed you did it to be fair like it's cool that you did that at the start of the season but in on reflection and actually i think even at the start of the season that was pretty optimistic <laughs> i think over ambitious was the word i word i use wasn't it <laughs> just on the training front it was completely ridiculous uh, uh having experienced how hard it is to fit these things into your life so i'm just looking at it now i had i was going to do three strength sessions a week <laughs> <laughs> a flexibility <laughs> session, two real rides, two real rides, two sessions on the turbo, and all, all that in one week, which is absolutely. <laughs> Have you done that no, all season? No, probably not. Um, I, was, I was like, who do I? Th who did I think I was on a pro contract or something? <laughs> um, so yeah. What gave you the confidence you were going to get that done at the start it's of the year, mate? Ridiculous. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, so one of the big, I, th I think um, coming back, if I'd known this at the start, I wouldn't, I would have been way more realistic about the time that I had to get, in, to get into stuff like training. <clears throat> I think probably at my peak I was maybe fitting in two gym sessions, probably two proper rides and maybe a session on the turbo yeah. trainer. But I mean, I, man I probably managed that a couple of, a couple of weeks or so. I was going to say, I'd say that's a good week as a like a dad with a normal job and a busy yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. I think what would be more realistic now, going back, would be well, we'll probably talk about this anyway. But and we've covered it in other, in other, um, <clears throat> in other episodes. But is this idea that the summer's basically a write-off for any training, and that any gain gains. <gasps> Just use that word that I bowed. What did you say? <laughs> They're gonna. <laughs> yeah, where's the red button? They're gonna be made in like the time now, probably between this these sort of six months, where I guess pros are maybe doing this as well. Um, is getting some proper gym time in and making progress now, and then for us dads, just trying to maintain that or sustain that or keep it at a reasonable level through through. Um, through the summer period um so would you have worked harder in let's call it the off season the winter would you have worked harder do you think you could have worked harder or were you like oh, i just work this hard because i'm going to carry on all summer and keep getting better like how would you look at that now um i think it's i think like you need some motivation and that motivation <laughs> definitely increases as you get close closer to the races so I probably would, I probably wouldn't be cracking on with stuff now, uh, and I haven't, and I haven't been, uh, depending on what we're going to do next year. Anyway, <clears throat> um, but I'd, be, I'd also, I, I think I'd went into it with the idea like I'm going to turn myself into this like racing machine, um, <laughs> and I signed up for the Strength Factory Coaches like DH, uh, full DH program. Yeah, complete, yeah, complete DH, DH or whatever which it is, yeah. was um I mean you can dip in and out of that as much as you like but it was really focused on like it had a it had a like a base baseline period where you built up some 
some sort of like baseline strength, flexibility, etc. But then it really did try and get you motoring as you went on. And I think I would probably focus now on just um, some like modest gym gains in the off season. So a bit of general conditioning, being yeah. a bit more flexible, um, some strength work, maybe a little bit of cardio work, but not really trying to get into amazing race shape, just trying to get in better shape overall because i think that's yeah. more realistic and i'd see loads of benefits from that as well if you're then going to do for sure. successive seasons and try and improve and improve maybe i'd look at some sort of more um performance focused program perhaps but i was yeah. seeing loads of benefit just from just from the like baseline baseline stuff i could touch me yeah you don't need to be a toes. huge amount yeah. <laughs> i was feeling way stronger <laughs> you know I could feel it all, you know, yeah. my legs, my arms, shoulders were in way better shape. This is all in the past tense, Ben. You're saying was Yeah, lot. well, it's kind of slipped a little bit since then. I can't touch my, can't touch my toes anymore. Um, oh, man. I haven't man. been to the gym for a while. We need to get some races booked we up. We do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Johnny, I guess this comes down to like 80-20, right? Something along there, like how can you get a good percentage of the of the i was going to use the word gain sorry ben a good percentage of the gains um without having to put in like stupid amounts of work you're and you're very analytical how have you how have you formed your opinion on that sort of training side from what you've learned over the last year because you went you went pretty hard in the winter i'd say i did but i've i've also done a variety of training in the past so i think i was i had quite a realistic view of what i could get done and I was starting at a very low base, so I knew it was going to be hard work, but I knew that the um, that the hard work would you know pay off in terms of how I felt, and that was completely right. I didn't set myself any um, unrealistic gain uh, goals, <laughs> shall we say? Um, but I, um, I, you know, I. I, I relied heavily on Wahoo and you know I built that program at the beginning of the year or it built the program at the beginning of the year and I um, tried to stick to it as best of, best I could and you know I think I was quite lucky in escaping being ill during that period so that I managed to get that consistent and uh, you know and after, after about three months I was already feeling you know the benefits so um, I think in terms of I think at our age, so coming back to what you were saying about the 80-20, the, the benefit comes from the consistency. It's not about any one thing that you do. It's that you're doing something consistently all the time. And so I wanted to get into the habit of trying to do something every day. That might not happen, but it, you know, there's, um, there's this Russian guy who's the guy who introduced kettlebell, kettlebells to the uh, the Western world called Pav Pavel Satsuin, I think his name is. And he talks about something called grease the groove, which is where, you know, you, you just constantly do something over and over and over again. Like you have a, um, a pull-up bar in your doorway and every time you go through there, you do a pull-up and it's just like that constant greasing of the groove that gets you progress over time. So for me, it was just if try and do something every day, it might be half an hour. It might be, quarter of an hour it might just be taking the dog for a walk but just kind of trying to be consistent and then trying to carry that forwards and uh, you know I, I i think the only um um not outlandish but um uh, you know goal that I, i'd set was i wanted to to you know do the first race and then try and do things in between to improve for the second race well that was just a non sequitur from the start really it was like you know as ben said it's you know it's about what you're doing now in preparation for the entire season really um so uh, i think on the training side of things that, that was the main takeaway but i was i was overall pretty happy with you know kind of the work i did you know i'll probably tweet things again and yeah moving is forward, your group still greasy <laughs> well, i'd like to say so um <laughs> no, but have you stuck with it like you built a habit you built a really yeah. good habit but yeah, at the start a, of the year like yeah and i took a bit of time off but i've been um i've been just steady away doing stuff that doesn't add a great deal of stress to the system but just trying to um you know like habits uh, you know they're like inertia it's like once you kind of get the ball rolling on something it's easy to keep keep them going it's that it's the change that's hard so so long as you've kind of just keep that like mental trick of 
moving forwards on it, then it's like, well, you know, the habit is I'm somebody that exercises, so I'm just going to keep doing that. So I don't, you know, I've 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 not done anything structured. I've just picked and choose different uh, workouts to do here and there, and a bit of strength stuff. So nothing, nothing arduous, but I, I have been reasonably consistent. Yeah, have you both done? more on the fitness side than you would do in a normal year as a result of having these goals yes 100 percent. and i know that's how i am if you give me a goal i'll work towards it if i don't have a goal i'll be like Meh. <laughs> i'll eat some pies <laughs> ben what about you yeah yeah i have in periods um yeah it's maybe i've maybe ridden a little bit less though as a consequence so Depends. Okay. Depends what you mean. If you mean um, training for the sake of getting in better shape, yeah, I've done loads more this year. If you mean in sort of exercise in general, probably done a bit more, but maybe not loads. And has that less has that less riding come because you've prioritised like a gym session or something yeah. non riding related yeah. to do with this project? Yeah. And and do you do you regret any of that in hindsight? Like, do you? Are you happy with that decision, looking back at um, it? Su- I mean, I was quite surprised how much I enjoyed the gym. Um, <laughs> I don't like saying yeah, that. Yeah, because you, you, really <laughs> like, yeah. you really didn't go no. before it. Um, and I'm, like me and Johnny have both done it, yeah. but you, you, it's not something you've been into. No, really. and I find it quite hard to fit into my routine on my life, really. So maybe I'd maybe simplify... Yeah maybe simplify things and do and be able to do a bit more at home given the experience i've i've now got do i regret okay is there a certain <coughs> kit you'd get for that then um probably a bench and a bigger range of dumbbells and that would probably do me i reckon Makes okay stiff. not a lot Fair. but it's the space yeah. and that sort of thing it's a bit tricky yeah yeah um yeah do i regret not riding as much yeah <laughs> Like one, one of my <laughs> sort of like one of the downsides of this year has been like I used to do quite a few sort of big rides, get the train out to the side of the Peak District, ride home, stuff like that. More um, not performance cycling really, just for the for the love of it and the being out in the outdoors. Yeah. Um, and I've done no no rides like that this year, but you know I've done plenty of other stuff to take its place, so that's okay. Don't really regret it. Yeah, fair enough. Johnny, give us another thing you've learned this year. Uh, well, Ben t- took my favourite one, which was you know, all plans in the summer should be <laughs> written off, and um, <laughs> yeah, you just got to kind of like make do with you know whatever you can get. Um, never trust Chris to book Airbnbs. Never, yeah. That's that's one of my notes that I made. I think our our hit rate was one out of three in terms of uh, <laughs> yeah. sleep sleeping conditions. The t- the two thirds length beds was my particular <laughs> favourite. Yeah, <laughs> super, bu- com- super good way to get sleep the night before a race. Yeah, the upper bunk bed, child's bunk bed, was a particular <laughs> treat. I should have brought a fabric softener bottle to wee into in the middle of the night because it was. <laughs> it was not ideal. <laughs> Why a fabric softener? But does it have to specifically it's be got a, a white yeah. out at the top? Okay, good. Let's see what you've done. Yeah, nice. Go on then. Real, give us a real lesson learned. A uh, real lesson learned is um, more more big bike time. I think yeah, is the biggest yeah. takeaway. Was yeah. um, it, I don't, you know? I don't think we got the bike slate, but. Um, Maybe if we got the mer, you know, or like I think if we do it again through year, the winter, it, yeah, through the winter, <clears> and just and uh, you know, not that you know, not being like, oh, I'm going to go out, you know, I'm not in a position to go out on it every week, but maybe like once every month or so, go to you know an uplift day and just get that full day of like runs in on, on the bike um, would be, you know, I think we're in a better position now at the end of the year, having done uh, three races and a couple of uplift days. But, you know, in hindsight, I would have definitely have done more of that. So I definitely want to do a bit more of that uh, leading into, say, doing more races 
um, for you know comfort on the bike you know is different than my other bikes you know I can't just uh, you know you've got to ride them faster so you've got to get used to riding faster and you know the pace at races is faster than the pace that you normally ride so it's kind of just kind of getting into that kind of mindset and also i think you can it gives you the chance at an uplift day to really you know do a little bit of puzzling if, if that's your thing um yeah yeah a, puzzling in a, in at the a, races is not the best plan right no I, I, you know i largely tried not to do that I, I kept all my puzzling to away mostly away from the races um yeah but you'd have liked to have done more puzzling at bike parks around the UK. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and there were some things that I think happened that were outside of my control, um, on the puzzling front. So, um, but you know, I've got some things I, I, I've got in my head that I want to try. So I'm going to, you know, uh, focus on those and you, yeah, I think. Yeah. And every uplift day on a downhill bike is a pretty awesome. Day oh, out, so like. good. You know, the one that we did, I think post Nat champs where we were with the, f- uh, you know friends and family and you know we, it wasn't a case it was just the three of us like pushing reasonably hard you know hard and you know going fast uh, we, we were with the family riding kids and it was it was amazing i had such a good time and you know the the, the bike is you know it's just so good it's just so good so much fun to ride um so yeah just getting more time on it i think would be good yeah, that's a lesson learned for me is downhill bikes ruin all other bikes. Yeah. I think we've got used to like, <laughs> oh, you know, they're maybe they're just as good, like modern enduro bikes, they're super good, and just like downhill bikes, all this, and then you ride a modern downhill bike and you're like, oh no, this is <clears> this <throat> is incredible. Like, I don't know what you thought, Ben, but every time I get on that thing, even if it's just in the garage and I sit on it, I'm like, I get, I get a bit excited. Yeah, they're definitely like a step up from any other bike. Um, still makes me still makes me think about um that first that first ride that first ride where we had like the uh johnny and i had sort of like pushed up pushed up at kersus and we were looking at this step step down over a track and we were like oh i don't know if we can make that and we looked at our bikes like but we're gonna give it a go anyway <laughs> we didn't make it <laughs> but just yeah com- confidence inspiring and um and incredible fun and like we've had it's been so nice to be able to like go to these races and ride it, ride it, and just not have to worry about things being like failing or not performing. Or they've been faultless, faultless for the whole season, which yeah. is great. You can concentrate on other stuff. Very true. Yeah, pretty much zero maintenance. I think like all season long. We'll talk about the kit in a bit, but yeah, they've been they've been faultless, which is cool. Um, one thing I would say I've learned is that downhill racing is not as intimidating as I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm sure there are tracks on the planet that <laughs> would be, and I'm you know we talked a little bit the other day, and I think Ben at least you were kind of thinking maybe we should go and race Fort William next year and I wasn't so sure but um, like I don't know I was I was super nervous of it and I'm still you know I have a healthy you know fear of entering those events I guess but I found it all round like a everyone was super welcoming really friendly the band was really good there's clearly a bunch of people certainly in our category anyway in the old man's category where like everyone's knows each other people have been riding at races together over the years and and yeah the banter was good but also especially at the pier stuff we were doing the tracks were like really well built really nicely designed generally super good fun all rideable like no nothing too insane like yeah i found i don't know again don't know what you boys think but i found downhill racing in the uk at that level anyway like really like a fun thing to be part of and way less scary than I expected. 100%. I, you know, I was, I thought it was the Pierce events were top notch, um, great organization, um, great group of people. The tracks were just, um, I, I guess we only really rode the two, two venues given that the Nat Champs was at Rita Fellin, obviously a different track, but they were, uh, they were tough tracks, but as you say, not n- nothing out of the realm of um, you know realistic for somebody who who wants to enter a downhill race. You know, there was there was fourteen year olds there having a great great old time. You know, and yeah. there was there was um, fifty plus guys there having a great old time. You know, the complete ends of the spectrum. Um, so it was just 
great events really really good events fun tracks the the tracks perfect the tracks like you could ride the, the tracks so kind of suitable for all but you could get like there were if you wanted to go fast you could go fast you know there were beyond yeah. like anything i've ridden at an enduro race stuff like that they were you know high speed wide open in places if if you wanted to um so the challenge yeah. was definitely still there um yeah the pierce the pierce races though they were awesome they're like so slickly organized such a nice bunch of people like participating and sort of involved in the organization as well and i was a bit yeah i was a bit like what I, what's it going to be like first race how is it going to you know we're like new people in this quiet and it, when we got there it's pretty clear that it's well established and people have been racing for a long time and they've been and it's like quite a close-knit group at times but we, we were made like felt totally welcomed into that um so yeah wonderful wonderful experience yeah been. massive yeah massive thanks to everyone that like made the time to chat to us and came and said hello and made us feel welcome because it did certainly help me like put my like nerves to the side and and have a go at riding and yeah i think they did they do it like like you say ben they do a good job on the tracks in that yeah pretty much anyone could ride down them but to ride them fast is quite a skill there's definitely on every track we rode this year there were a few big moves to be had if you wanted them and like watching the way that you know, riders like Matt Walker and Jordan Williams attack some of those sections was pretty, uh, pretty <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> humbling, I would say. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely a big part of it. Um, le another lesson I think that I didn't really learn, but you guys did, is that uh, the mud tires are pretty good and pretty handy. Max's shorties, <laughs> you boys used a lot this year, huh? not expected really, Ben. Most uh, most miles put in on those tires, tires, I reckon. <clears throat> Uh, they're, they're really surprisingly like versatile because you know, Johnny was talking about that day we had at Bike Park Wales, which was the week after National Champs. National Champs was like a mud fest most of the time. Bike Park Wales is runs pretty good even in the wet, and it was fairly damp when we were there. But um, the shorties ran. I just left them on. They were solid, solid even on that sort of like harder, <clears throat> looser, looser surface. Yeah, I think you've been using them a bit off season as well haven't you johnny i have i put I, yeah i put them on my e-bike not not the same ones well um, i had a set that i'd bought for a i think boltby bash many a years ago and just in preparation for if it was wet and it it was put bone dry so i just ran normal tires so they've just been sitting there and then after our escapades in the wet this year um i was like you know what well, there was multiple reasons. So I thought right, I'll put them on the e-bike. But so I was I want to spend more time on these tires. Um if I want to kind of tempt Sod's law and well I've done all this preparation, then it'll be bone dry next year. <laughs> <laughs> Good, thank you. Um, Take yeah. it for the team. But also but also I was like, you know what, the, as Ben said, these are really good tires. What if I rode them just more? And I was like, you know what, I'll put some I'll put some proper like um muddier condition tires on and ride them through the winter so i went riding with some friends of ours um at woburn and they were amazing like the, the amount of lean over i could i you know i could handle on them was oh, it's just so so good <laughs> i was just having such a good time um so so yeah um, such a good tire and in those kind of mixed conditions i think at that last race you know there was people on all sorts you could have got away with it almost any, any tire um but uh, yeah uh, we've spent a lot of time on them and they were really good tires would you stick one on the front of a non-e-bike over the winter johnny out of interest yeah yeah i'd put them on any bike i you know i, I, I just put them on the e-bike because that's the bike i was going to ride the most yeah I was just wondering about the drag of them on the rear, maybe like when you're pedaling stuff, but certainly on the front, it's not going to really notice, is nah, it? I don't think there's that much more drag over a normal tire, really. I wouldn't say. Um, it's a shame. I did actually, uh, I'll fess up to this, but I did have a, a, a DH semi slick in the back of the car had it been dry. <laughs> <laughs> for the races or for, uh, yeah, for time at Woburn? Uh, did you? Oh, yeah. you really work you ruined the weather for everyone there yeah really properly fucked it up but sorry oh no i don't know 
Wow, impressive though. You were ready for some, uh, some, I've, for some I've, fast I've, racing. I've, I've ridden one before though, and they're absolutely amazing. So what fast. tire is that? The, what's it called? Uh, it's minion. The, it's a minion semi slick, right? Minion se se semi slick. Yeah. Yeah. I raced the city one. one. But... Ah, okay. ah, right. Okay. Ah, there Super we go. Fast. Didn't even spot that. Impressive. All right. Um, I'll give you another one. I think that, like the preparation in advance mm. of events is a massive win. One of the things that was ace for me was having like a race box in the garage, just a big plastic box of everything I needed, like spares, number board, uh, zip ties, blah, 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 you name it, like just in a box all year. So that in the on the week of the race, I knew I could just pick that up and throw it in the back of the car. And I wasn't like packing and hunting for stuff on the, the day before. That really helped. Like, I think at most rounds, at least one of the nights, one of us had cooked the food and taken it, which helped, like, especially, I think, the night of between practice and the race. I like, just want everything to be super efficient and turn around quickly. So having that meal, like, so you just got to heat it up was super beneficial. And then I would say the last round where we all took a bit more time and we got there, like... We got there in good time on the Friday. We got a track walk done. We had time to like go to the pub and get some food on the Friday night rather than, you know, turning up at midnight or mm -hmm. whatever, having to get up and go and find the venue in the morning. Like just taking, if you're going to commit to doing some racing, then actually if you can, and it's not always easy, right, with, with work and life. But I think, I don't know how you boys feel, Johnny, maybe you can give us your thoughts, but... I feel like that last race where we all just took that Friday afternoon made quite a difference to how easily the weekend flowed. Yeah, I think so. Um, it was it was hard for me to judge. I was quite ill, to be honest. Yeah, true. And, um, it was um, arriving early and walking the track was kind of my least, you know, least of my concerns at that point in time. Um, so... I, I do think, you know, maybe giving yourself more time. Um, in hindsight, do, you know, I'm not sure if... I, w I wonder whether if I if I walk a track, I overthink it. And okay. maybe I'm better not. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not uh, sold either way on that at the moment. Okay, fair. Yeah, go on, Ben. What do you mm. think? <clears throat> Uh, I mean, I, I like for the last round, stepping back a bit. We've all done a bit of racing before, so I thought we had the like prep bit down pretty well. Really, we thought about you know what we needed and food across the weekend and stuff. But I think we did get better and slicker as like the more races we did. Definitely for me, a track walk is like essential. I was way happier mm -hmm. having done a track walk at national champs and at, and at the last round. Um, I just, okay, it makes me feel secure and confident. I know what, well, probably just to know what I'm turning up to on Saturday morning for starters. Um, and also I think if I haven't walked the track, whenever I'm riding down it, I'm a bit, I'm a bit unsure. I'm like, am I in the right, am I on the right line here? I'm never quite sure. Um, that I'm in the right place, so that track walk was really good, really good for me. I would say, if no, well, your your put gone, go on. Sorry, and if, I was just going to say your performance correlated quite strongly with track walking, yeah. and that could be uh, not causation, but no, possibly still. not. Um, I was just going to say, if people have, if people are racing and they haven't listened to Ollie Morris's episode from around September time, that's like an essential yeah. bit of listening for how to prepare for a race weekend like in the run-up and whilst whilst you're there as well um yeah so you'd yeah, be useful 100 percent. because we did get we did get a little bit i think we got a little bit slack with it in a way as well because when johnny and i turned up for the sunday <laughs> at pierce we turned up uh, like and stuff had kicked off half an hour earlier than we'd remembered which wasn't great and then we decided <laughs> we'd better change to the mud tires so I was getting a little bit stressed by all that, like uh, feeling the feeling the pressure a bit. So um, yeah, know the know the timing is uh, is a is a yeah, key bit. Yeah, kind of get it off yeah. path. Don't get don't check. get complacent. Double check sure. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
We need one of those, like the whiteboards, eh? That they have in all the pets at the World Cup. <laughs> Schedules on and stuff. War <laughs> times. Yeah, we need some pets. We need a pet. We'd like a pet, pet yeah. at the last but round. Actually, <laughs> lesson learned: a pet, especially at that last round, would have been kind some of game changing because yeah. it was horrible, eh? Like it rained a lot, especially on the Sunday, and to just be sheltering under like the boot of my car was not not ideal. Pit. pit. Okay, noted. <laughs> investment <laughs> um i've learned to, that i should listen to my body more and I, I did i actually did surprisingly for me did a pretty good job of that earlier in the year at national champs when i knew i wasn't right i kicked up did that run had a bit of a moment got away with it and decided to call it and i felt i would say worse probably coming into that last round at hopton and i'd been to a yt press launch the week before and ridden and felt really spaced out on the bike and like didn't I sat out a few of the runs on that because I just knew things weren't right and I felt like I was going to get hurt and I knew coming into that weekend I shouldn't be and I spent a lot of time convincing myself that it was all in my head and I was going to be fine and loads of positive self-talk and all this kind of stuff like track walk looks sick the track looks super good I was dead excited I was like yeah we got this and then like three corners in I was on the deck with my shoulder hanging out and that has bit like the recovery is pretty slow i think we're like eight or nine weeks post that and i've still got pretty reduced mobility quite a lot of soreness i can ride like but not properly um and i think if i list i like i knew i knew i wasn't right i just felt the pressure of like the project the track looked cool i wanted to ride with you guys like i let all that get on top of me a bit instead of just being like okay i'm not right we should sit this out. We've spent some money here, but ultimately let's just help these boys and have a bit of a fun weekend that way. So I think, yeah, in hindsight, I would, I think you do, we probably all know our bodies better than we give ourselves credit and actually maybe just trying to be a bit more in tune with them is a good thing. Um, I think we, I've also learned fatigue <clears throat> sucks and takes a long time to get over. Yeah. But if you give yourself the rest then it feels like you come out the other side, go on Ben. I was just going to say, on reflection, maybe we could have like uh, supported you on that decision a bit better. I don't know. We're kind of in the same position. We like really wanted you to ride, but um, maybe it looked like it might not have been the best decision. I don't know. That's difficult. I don't know. You never know, though, do you? Eh? Like, you're always going to be like, I don't think I've ever and maybe we should think about this a bit more but you always like try and amp your mates up don't mm -hmm. you i think you were like if anyone's ever like a bit down before a ride or whatever you're like come on it's gonna be sick like just get kitted up let's go it's gonna be amazing and maybe we don't always think about like why they're not amped up for it and whether it's just that yeah, they don't like the point. rain very much and they can't be bothered or whether they're, there's something going on that probably means they shouldn't be riding or you know yeah. they need a bit of help or something so yeah maybe we should be i don't know it's cool because we're all excited about riding we love it right we want to share that but yeah maybe we don't always think, and you, yeah I don't maybe know. you're a bit unlucky in a way as well maybe you could have nine times out of ten you might have been fine on that run and all the rest of the runs but yeah uh, just that time you yeah, that, yeah that's, that's a good question question actually if if you hadn't have crashed what do you think would have you know do you think you'd have got through the weekend or do you think it, 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 it was inevitable? I really don't know. I think I think if I'd have had any kind of significant moment, I probably would have pulled the plug because I think that's yeah, when your okay. eyes get mm. opened. I think if I'd not, I'd have probably like plodded on through the weekend and just dug my own hole a bit deeper. Like, I mean, I physically could get on a bike. I was able to ride. I just wasn't able to ride well or in control and up to yeah. a level that I know I can ride at. So... Yeah, I think, I don't know. Yeah, I think if I'd have got through, like, chill. I think if it was dry, for example, and that wasn't mm. slippery, I probably could have just ridden at, like, a moderate pace and got by and just dug the fatigue a bit deeper. But whatever, I don't think I would have benefited from it. Like, I wouldn't have got a great result and I wouldn't have improved my situation overall. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's hindsight, eh? Like, yeah, definitely a lot of lessons learned out of this year and that whole fatigue thing. I just never experienced that before or knew really like it's quite hard. You, I've spent a lot of the summer like 
second guessing like is this all in my head am i actually like fine and i'm this is all like a head thing or what like it's i don't know it gets pretty dark and confusing and uh, foggy to try and work your way out of but when it goes you realize how like you, then you know what right yeah. feels like it's kind of weird you sort of forget what right feels like it's probably anyway. a bit of a combination of both it's it's probably a bit of a vicious circle it's like you've got the fatigue and then you you said yourself you've got this like questioning of of your of your mental state and then it's like well you know that then feeds back into how you feel and you know it's just this vicious circle and it's only actually once you kind of commit to being like i'm just going to do whatever it takes to rest that you, yeah. you you see this like rise back out of it and then it becomes this positive feedback loop the opposite totally yeah like, totally oh mentally yeah. I, you know it wasn't me i'm not crazy you know yeah and then that you makes feel like you that. feel better in yourself yeah yeah because as you worry about it obviously your stress goes up so your sleep like degrades so that makes you more tired so even if you sleep more the sleep quality is gone so yeah you're right it is this vicious downward circle and then you do have to like it's like a fuse you're like right circuit break let's just chill and really try and work this out and relax and yeah i've had to go like really back to basics on everything like nutrition hydration sleep meditation like all of that to kind of get back to sleeping properly and gradually feeling like i've got more energy and it's been that has felt pretty amazing to be fair like it feels good so do it doing that's all a nice these place to be. doing all these things that these experts say you know <laughs> yeah like exactly all these, it's not like all these simple simple things and it's like oh yeah they're all right okay yeah yeah, yeah totally and it, you just take it for granted i think like yeah and equally like when you're tired you eat convenient you don't eat good and it like everything just cut it like it all drags down so yeah it's been a it's been a wild ride but anyway we'll, we'll move on from that any more lessons learned any more stuff that you guys are like I change that or this is good that's come out of this do you mean in terms any in terms of a race weekend or in terms of any just in terms of this project, project really right. like <clears throat> yeah how do you feel it's impacted you what would you, would you do differently like anything like so that. i mean the thing that surprised me most was what i felt had helped me improve most was like a focus on technique um mm -hmm. I'd kind of, this kind of came off the back of what Johnny was doing as well. Um, I, mean, I sort of consider myself fairly competent at riding a bike. And yeah. um, I hadn't really thought of technique as a way, as like an area to focus on. And then Johnny was talking about various things and he, I've gone bang on about this all the time, but he's like, yeah, everyone can knock 10% off their, their best time down somewhere. <laughs> I was like, rubbish. And um so we started having to go at that and it, lo and behold it's possible if you focus on technique and there were certain things that like I just focus on carrying a bit more speed out of corners, carrying a bit more speed through certain sections, going a little bit faster than I felt comfortable in in places and it was amazing how much of a difference that could make to you, you like time down lo local 100%. runs. Um, yeah. So I would probably do some co get some coaching uh okay as a as a yeah. means of that's improving. Cool. um you can yeah. you can you can i'll coach it it's fine yeah. just listen to me more basically that's yeah, what yeah. learned, isn't it? <laughs> Classic. i think i think um yeah that focus on downhill riding specifically really forces you into how do i go from the top to the bottom as quick as possible and it, it starts you start thinking about lines you think start thinking about carrying average speed and retaining momentum and all that kind of stuff leads you into that whereas maybe in jury you're like ah hey, you know just get fitter pedal harder and i think i feel now like if i went to an enduro race not only would i be more confident because i'm like oh, i've done downhill now this is just enduro this would be fine like i feel feel more yeah more comfortable on a start line more ready to go and do that but i also feel like i can analyze what i'm doing better think about the track in a different light I, I f and the, you know track walks have helped that and those kind of discussions along the track walk and yeah i think a lot of what we've done 
this year will make us would make us better bike riders in for example an enduro race and i think you know the, a lot of the enduro guys have said that like eddie masters one of the big reasons he races down is to stay sharp he thinks it makes him faster on an enduro bike and having had the experience we've had this season i can totally see why yeah uh, 100% agree I've, I, it's actually something i really enjoyed doing this year is trying to focus on my technique and thinking about you know you know keep being mindful of my body position and what's my body position doing and w one of the, the most useful things was seeing some of the pictures from the race and being like you know why is my foot in that position i don't think my <laughs> foot should be there um and then then riding with that conscious thought in my head and of trying to correct that mm. and i think that's been really beneficial and also in terms of like trying to go faster it, it, it's not about just going faster it's about being say more efficient or as you say carrying a little bit more speed it's not actually adding more risk to your run it's it's just being more efficient with how you're um using that risk throughout your run so you know I felt that I was able to, you know, ride faster without adding more risk. And I think that that's yeah. a, you know, just a useful thing to do with your riding in general, because it's like, well, you know, actually I can ride, you know, maybe not 10% faster, but I can ride 5% faster without actually, you know, doing anything different. So just by tidying up my technique. So I'm not, yeah, you know, it's not yeah. adding that kind of like that risk factor you know like oh i've got i've just got to go faster you know yeah there's no point going about... all in yeah through a rock garden if you're then going to lose all that speed in the next turn because you've got an awful line or you can't ride around turns so exactly. yeah it's about how you maintain that high average speed the whole way down the yeah. track 100%. which is where you eke out the eke mm. out the time yeah for sure any more lessons learned before we move on to talking and geeking out on kit <laughs> i think i think we've done a good job on that actually i think we're pretty much thanks johnny <laughs> <laughs> good stuff let's talk about all the the bites and the bits and bobs that we had then and we'll start with brakes um i've been ri the riding the gear stuff for a couple of years now i really like it but it was your boy's first year um i am impressed by the fact that i can customize to the lever yeah. blade that i really like that works really well for me and i do feel that there's a big difference between the, the standard lever and the, the bruni lever that is that i ended up on the hc wide um I also like the fact that I hang off my brakes for dear life a lot of the time and I haven't had to touch those brakes and bleed them all season. I think I did a pad change in the middle of the year maybe, but like the oil in them super clean, and no issues with any of that stuff. That's been real good for me. Um, ben, thoughts on, on yeah. the brakes again, your first yeah, time? Yeah, I'd agree. Um, I really like that you can choose a different lever, lever shape for whatever suits you. I like quite long levers run them close to the bars so i think i ended up with the same levers as you um mm -hmm. uh, yeah they've got a really i th no i think you ended up with a two finger lever which i think danny hart uses which is even longer uh, than okay. the ac one right yeah it's a long long yeah. lever um and they've got a real nice feel so you can like, i can almost pull the levers to the bars without them locking up but you just get that nice progressive extra bit of power as they come on <clears throat> Um, you do have them far, like tight in on the bike point then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, and I'm, yeah, I've gone the other way. Um, yeah. They, we did have a couple of issues with like levers. They're kind of designed to break away, aren't they? And that we had, I think. You, yeah, they've got a little fuse. Yeah, in. which is yeah. good, but not good when you they break away, getting your bike off the trailer at the top of a downhill run. Yeah, if they get caught mm. on something and they get pulled backwards, that can cause issues. I had that. I had a couple go over the first year or so and then I had a look at the levers that we got more recently and I'm sure that fuse bit is thicker. I think they've changed it. I tried to, to find out for sure and I wasn't able to get an answer yet, but I think they might have toughened up that fuse right. a little bit on the more recent levers that we got. So yeah. I'm not sure if that issue will still be there, but yeah, in a way it's good that it doesn't snap the the lever body um, and they are easy to change, but it does mean that you do want to have spares yeah. with you. Yeah. For sure. Um, well, you can still ride with them. It just means that you have to like hold make sure place. you've got the lever yeah. under your finger before you set off. Yeah, because <laughs> they'll just flop open. Basically, could get, could get a bit yeah. frightening. Um, I had yeah. odd issues with the like pistons dragging a bit, and um, but otherwise, other than that, did I t did I show you how to balance them? Yeah, still can. Did yeah, you I did try, try that? that a couple of times? 
I'm, uh, okay, interesting. I'm not one to uh, persist too long unless the problem is really acute. So <laughs> have a go and then leave free it. Free speed, you're, throw, <laughs> you're, you're throwing away free speed, mate. You might have won national champs if your yeah, brakes right. weren't rubbing. <laughs> I think we I think we can fix that though. To yeah, be yeah. fair, like that's pretty easy to get them. That's harder on the front end, I think, because of the way the they, the mount works on the forks mm. with all brakes. I think I always find that front brake harder to get, not rubbing. Yeah. But we couple can get them. A couple get them of things I really way. like about them. I think the pads are magnetic. Is that right? The pads pads are magnetic, and they yeah, like yeah they do. I click think so. Yeah, they like the click pistons in. and the um, the rotors. They like tink as they cool down. They're like floating rotors. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. You get to the bottom, they're like. I was like, oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> What's better, the noise of an Industry 9 oh. rear hub or the tinking oh. of your McGill? Uh, Industry 9 hub when you're off the ground is clearly is about the greatest sound in mountain biking, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. The angry wasp, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair. Well, while we're on hubs, let's talk about wheels. Um, Johnny, you've had we are you've got a pair of wheel ones on another bike, but this is all the first time all of us have ridden the convergence wheels. Um, uh, keen to hear your thoughts. I was pretty impressed that we've got a carbon bike and carbon wheels, so it could potentially could be really stiff, but it doesn't feel that way at all. I think the ride quality of that package is super good. Yeah, really happy. Just um, nice and reliable. Um, I, I think the sign of a good product is when you don't think about it. So yeah, especially with wheels, you know, eh? Like, yeah, I was, I was thinking about the brakes. I was like, uh, you know, I, I hadn't anything to add beyond Benoit because you know I didn't have to think about them. I didn't have to worry about them. Um, and the same with the wheels. the The only issue was when you got a bad, you know, you got a Friday tire, well, a Monday tire as opposed to a Friday tire, and it was, you know, it would just be a struggle. Um, to fit them and you know even with my upgraded tire fitting technique uh, to see yeah, we, did, truly, we did teach you that through, this, through um, the season yeah uh, you know i've still had uh, you know still been tough work so i think okay. uh, you know it's you know but i've had that on other sets of wheels and tires where you've you know all of a sudden you fit you know one set and it was just like oh uh, you know this is just the mm. easiest thing in the world. Why does everyone complain about fitting tubeless tires? And then lo and behold, you know, here I am, you know, half an hour bleeding knuckles into trying to fit a set of tires. Um, so, but that's, there's nothing to do with the wheels really. Yeah. Um, they were just, just good, solid, no issues, just exactly what you want. Yeah. One thing I've always noticed with We Are One, I don't know if you've had the same experience, you boys, but some I've had some issues on other rims where once you've blown up a set of tubeless and then you want to take the tire off, it's like super hard to get the bead to drop back, like to pull away from the outside of the rim and drop back down into the rim bed. And I've never had that on wheel one. They always feel like they drop off pretty easily. Did you have the same experience this season or have you struggled with any of them? Massively. Massively struggled? Yeah. Have you? Okay. To get them off yeah. or yeah. to get them on? Yeah, the shorty to get the shorties off was um, I changed them back off, and it, it was getting it off the, off the bead was really difficult. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense though, eh? Because like the rims are super high tolerance; they come out of a metal mold, yeah. whereas a rubber part like a tire, yeah. I guess, has pretty loose. To, well, yeah, to, to has the, a loose tolerance. To the point that I had the um, you know it ruined the rim tape. I had to replace the rim tape. Okay. Interesting. I mean, but I think this is where it's just like th this combination of random combination of wheel and tire. Yes, yeah, so and, and me. To like, yeah, I'm probably the issue. <laughs> I love watching you trying to change that first set this season was one of the funniest things I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. You know what? Seen it everywhere. I, I changed tires. I changed tires at which one was it? The first one. I thought I did a reasonably good job on that. Mm. Um, when it was hot and then subsequent rounds it was just a disaster <laughs> yeah covered in mud fair I mean my comment my comment <laughs> on those wheels was that like I never had a set of wheels where the tyres went on so perfectly it was like okay <laughs> they just you pop them on <laughs> blew them blew them up they sealed up straight away didn't need a, didn't need like uh, a reservoir yeah, to, need a compressor no, or anything. they just went straight on with a trunk yeah. pump each time but maybe I was lucky Lucky with the combination. 
I mean, other, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I've, I've, yeah, I've got a couple of sets of wheel one across the downhill bike in my cottage, and I've never, never had a problem. But maybe Johnny's just, just got bad just luck. Me. Well, you gave me the special ones, <laughs> like the four. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> Let's talk about um, the bike itself then, the Canyon Sender frames. Uh, my, I mean, I to be fair, I think they're amazing. They've lasted super well all season. Uh, they ride really well. Um, my only real issue with it, and I think we probably all had this issue, is underneath the shock, like getting in there to clean out is quite hard and you get mud stuck between the rear, like the swing arm and the bottom bracket area as well. You've got to be careful with stuff getting stuck in there. It is, however, super easy to take the shock out, two bolts and slide it out and then you can get in there properly and clean it. But yeah, that was my only gripe. Ben, any thoughts on the actual sender? This is awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's a long time <laughs> since I'd ridden a downhill bike. Um, maybe it's partly getting onto a bike with a load of travel, um, but it's just brilliant. Um, nice sort of uh, decent options for adjustability as well. So I went mm. to like a progress. You can change the uh, the rate the rate at the rear end, and I went for the progressive option, and you can have a short or a long rear end and i went to the long in the end you can adjust stuff up the front that i didn't fiddle around with yet but maybe yeah <clears> maybe reach. going forwards i would i would do that it's nice to have all those options um yeah it's cool to have yeah. that adjustability built yeah. in. yeah otherwise just like confidence inspiring really getting on it <laughs> yeah yeah pretty easy to ride i was like for a bike that none of us had really ridden before find it quite easy to get to grips with so up to a decent level anyway. And I think then there's more puzzling, obviously, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, but then the bike allows that with all the adjustment. Yeah. What, how did you get on with it, Johnny? Actually, I was just thinking, uh, you know, I think our experience with it was completely in line with the other Canyon bikes we've been riding over the years. You know, it was get on, feel comfortable straight away, and you almost forget about it. You know, and the sender was no different. It was confidence inspiring. It was easy to ride. It didn't do anything, you know, outlandish, um, you know, in yeah, certain situations. It was just, you know, just a really, really good bike. It was super light. You know, mm -hmm. I remember when we came to pick them up and, and being like, my word, you know, this isn't a downhill bike. <laughs> it's, it's the same way as an enduro bike. Um, so uh, it was just yeah it's good you know i echo what you said about the um you know the mud getting trapped but i think probably most bikes have some some area where that's going to be an issue um, sure. i'm going to take mine apart i think over christmas and i dread to think where i'm going to find some of those little rocks from from rid of <laughs> um we did our best to get them out of there but every, every time i go and have a look there's, yeah. <laughs> there's one that i've missed so um <laughs> I did have a little bit of issue with my um, my headset kept coming loose. So oh, did I'm it? Check check the cups. Um, Interesting. Yeah, um, but it's probably more user error than anything else. I think I put most things down to that these days. <laughs> That's a bit um, of a theme here, Johnny. It is a bit of a theme. But uh, look, I've got nothing to complain on on that side of things. It was. I'm just trying to think now. Like, uh, nothing. Like, I, w yeah. I wonder if like <clears throat> it felt didn't feel like in terms of like riding position and so it didn't feel that f different to my enduro bike and maybe that is part of it bikes these days they're all kind of like longer and slacker than than they used to be and maybe there's not that big a difference between a downhill bike and a an enduro bike as they used to be back in the day it just did feel comfortable yeah, I think that's, straight that's away and, yeah it's less alien yeah, right yeah yeah, for sure. And in, they're all in Visi Frame Wrap, which mine still looks box fresh, but that's probably because it didn't <laughs> do much at the last two races. <laughs> what about your, you guys had a bit more uplift time and a bit more time on the track? Do they look pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, overall, I think pretty good. I've got a, a, maybe peeled up in a little places. And I, my my right heel catches the, the rear um, chain stay. Um, oh, yeah, in a big way. I'd forgotten about of, that. Because of my duck feet. So, yeah. um, it's done it done its but, job then really yeah. i'm gonna i put some um th uh, 3m tape on that so mm -hmm. it's fine um but yeah. yeah it's great oh it looks good cleans well you know what they do clean up well and we've got a lot of practice at that so <laughs> you, you did know, do a lot of washing yeah 
Yeah. Let's talk about suspension. And um, I think we've all been to some extent on the puzzle this year. <laughs> ben, to start off with, I think you'd rather have had an air shock, right? You struggled a little uh, bit with getting yeah. the course up. And you are on the very light end of yeah. things, it's fair to I mean, say. How much do you weigh, Ben? Tell us, tell uh, us again. 63 kilograms, about 10 and a bit, just over 10 <laughs> stone. Um, but the thing about the coil shot, you, it just feels so nice when you like, even if you just like drop the back end of the bike or something, it's like, oh yeah, this is going to feel so good when I hop on. <laughs> so I'd really, uh, I'd miss that. I'd miss that feel, I think. But God, yeah, man, I was faffing around with springs, springs this way, springs that way, buying springs on eBay. I think, I think I'd go up 25 pounds from the one i'm on at the moment whatever it okay. is uh it's probably just the sweet spot i think this one's probably just a bit too soft uh uh-huh. um i know you said it earlier it's easy to take the shock out yeah i mean it, <laughs> it's easy but it's not that easy Did you not find that <laughs> well it's easy to take it out okay. getting it back in is a bit of, bit of bit more fiddly just getting the eye getting in, the alignment yeah. is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That yeah that's times. a bit more just because it's quite a tight fit yeah yeah which it needs to be um yeah uh, so i mean i almost bought one of those little you can get these things that you clamp on the spring and the shock that tells you that measures the travel accurately because i was so sick of getting like my yeah. wife or my kids or trying to measure the sag myself while sitting on it um and that would be a lot easier with a with an air spring uh save a bit more weight yeah. so yeah maybe maybe that'd be an option um i mean for me i just the forks, the forks were dead easy to set up. Basically, you set the travel, fiddle with the damping a little bit, and I just left it. The uh, <laughs> Johnny's face for those who are listening, <laughs> not watching. Um, and the rear end, I kind of dialed it in. We, pro- I, I'd agree with what Johnny was saying earlier. Probably needed a little bit more bike time to get things sorted for the yeah. start of the season. There's a lot they going on, quite right. and they do. Yeah. Yeah, so much travel that it's such an important part of the way yeah. the bike rides. So and ma- getting that dialed in is important. And maybe as well, that first time you actually race it and you're really going at like pushing things and going at race pace, you probably need need a bit of time then to make your final few final few adjustments. I wasn't quite close enough for that. Yeah. But then once I was once I'd got reasonably close, that was it for me. There was no more puzzling or what to be done i just left it left it as it was yeah yeah i i decided that i was jackson goldstone and had this rebound running stupidly fast which wrecked my first race because i got such bad arm pump from it <laughs> but in hindsight we learned that when we went away and did some bracketing and got that back and and realized that actually the manual settings that it recommended in the first place were pretty much the best i could find on that day um so yeah i think the manual settings on that fox stuff's not not too bad or certainly wasn't too bad for me um, Johnny, you you still maintain that something changed on that fork when you had a big bottom out at uh, Riddifell, and I, which I spoke to Geordie about, and we can't think what could have happened. But you, yeah, you, it definitely gave you some puzzling, eh? Yeah, it was. I, I think the forks. I think I've had the most problem with the the shock. You know, I did the setup there with Rich Simpson, um, RSR Bike Works, and it was that was. You know, I'm going to reiterate it was a great day because, you know, I learned as much as I benefited from the actual setup that I got at the end. Whether whether other people agree with that, based on what they've heard, is obviously debatable. <laughs> However, it was really beneficial and I was quite happy with the shock and making changes to the shock to, mm-hmm. to get the feeling I wanted. And I got this nice balance with the fork and then, you know, whatever happened at Rita Felon, it was... You know, I went from I felt like I could put the bike wherever I wanted to to not being able to steer the bike anywhere, yeah. um, and then subsequently have ended up with going up like eight to nine psi on the fork to kind of get back to where I was. So, um, is what it is, man. You know, I don't know. Yeah, we'll get, a, issue, we'll get a knows. rebuild. We'll get a rebuild yeah. done on this winter and see um, if there is anything. So, so that yeah, that was you know, I guess a bit annoying. Um, and I've always ridden Fox Forks, so I'm, you know, quite comfortable generally on that platform, albeit not with a, um, a downhill fork. So, but other than that, it was, 
I guess it made me real for me it made me realize like just the nuance of what these different changes in clickers can actually affect in terms of the bike and unfortunately with my newfound princess status I could really feel the difference between you know making those changes uh, and then <laughs> mucking things up with changing the bar height um, but it was you know uh, it was kind of like an educational experience for me in that in that yeah, sense so lot, I right? felt like I've I've, I've learned a lot and I, 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 you know I'm not I'm pretty comfortable with where I am now and I've got a couple of ideas I want to try and you know and we'll see how it goes I might do another day with Rich um, in the new year um, and uh, just more for the World Cup gossip than anything else but <laughs> it's um, yeah you know, you know what this is this is the other thing that I like about this project it's all the other bits in between it's you know is the training it is the 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 bit of puzzling it is the setup i like this i like this kind of like this you know uh, this problem to work on and move forwards with so while other people might go oh my god he's just fett fettling with his bike the whole time i like you know each their own you know yeah, i like totally I like doing it and it's, you know, I like seeing what the impact has on, on, on my riding. And then, you know, I've taken some of those elements to my e-bike and my enduro bike. It's, um, um, you know, I've, you know, I run a lot more compression on the rear end of those because I've found that, that that's how, how I like my bike to run. Yeah, no, it's good, man. Like you, you enjoy the process and that means you're going to do more of the process, which is a good thing, yeah. right? So enjoy the if process. you just enjoy the racing and hate everything else, then... <laughs> yeah. It's not going to work very well. So, yeah, it's cool. Nice. Um, talk about Fox clothing and protection. I would say it's come on quite a bit from any of the stuff that I had from Fox before this project. I've thought the fabrics and the fits have been pretty good on everything. For me, I think standouts are the shoes, the Union shoes I really like. For me, they're my go-to riding shoe now. Um and I used them for Stone King Rally, which involved a lot of pushing as well as riding, and it was super good and comfy for both. Um, and then I think you boys spent a lot of time in the in the waterproofs as well this year, and um, we're quite glad of them. Ben, thoughts on that Fox stuff? Oh, and actually, no, sorry, before I move on, that chest protector with the, the D3O backplate is also ridiculously comfortable. I forget that I've got that on when I wear it, and it's nice yeah. to have that level of protection. <clears throat> yeah, I was impressed by that chest plate. I was I was like when it when it arrived I was like I don't like these things never having worn one or anything that was just my opinion <laughs> this is for motocross um but yeah you don't notice it when it's on um and it got a bit of it got a bit crashed uh crashed in a few times um yeah again I'd say the shoes the shoes are awesome and the Crank Brothers mallets is it are they mallets the flat pedals no stamps isn't it Stamps. Stamp, yeah, the flat. That like shoe and that pedal are an amazing combination. Um, I got some five tens, which would have been my go-to previously. It's as good as it's as good as those, definitely. Um, yeah, with I would say with better build quality these days. Yeah, but... well, yeah, yeah, year in probably. Yeah. Although I haven't ridden like the latest five tens, I must yeah. admit. But yeah. Um, the the uh, we got. But a pair of, I think they're the Defend Pro pants, which are my like mm. they're my the black, black and grey go to uh sort of just a nice nice mix of light lightish weight but kind of sturdy enough to fall off in and not yeah. wreck. They're nicely vented, fit me great, they're lovely. Um the the waterproofs were awesome. God, I'm so glad we had those because we wore them a lot, <laughs> and they just made. I think it's the Neo Shell Pro yeah. or something like that, like the high yeah. end ones they are. But yeah, and they just good. made what could have been really miserable, you know, comfortable, and a lot more pleasant, basically. And you could even hose them down at the end and not get wet underneath. So they were, they were great. Like my, but probably my favourite bit of kit from there is the gym tee that we got which is like a stretch cotton mix t-shirt that we're all like totally in love I've, with i've, I've got yeah. one on now yeah, okay. it. Um, i think it might be forum maybe that tee i'm not sure um yeah but, it's just like the basic gym yeah. tee with the little fox like rubberized I've, logo on you can get that the gym wear was not out in europe until i think last week literally they've just launched in europe 
And uh, yeah, I would highly yeah. recommend that stuff. It's super I've nice. I've worn it eh? down the gym. I've slouched around in it. I've raced in it. I've worn it on uplifts. It's brilliant. It's probably like my favorite. Yeah, I wore it for travel all year as well. Like It's good for planes and flights and yeah. airports and getting sweaty and Very stuff. Very good. Yeah. Johnny, thoughts on the Fox stuff? Did You didn't really get on with the goggles. Is that right? Yeah, well, yeah. I think it's, you know... Uh, goggles are quite personal in terms of like where they sit on your face and mm. um it kind of just uh, pinch my nose a bit um but you know other than that they're great easy to change the, the lenses um Keros weren't really up to scratch in my opinion um but other than that they were good um yeah the you like the, the ones that like stick together right so you can't get water in between them was that yeah, the main gripe the, yeah, the so the tariffs you get like in you know five or ten, and they'd be like semi laminated together already, and then they'd, yeah. they'd come off as one. Whereas you couldn't put multiple ones on because the water would get in between. Mm-hmm. Um, the um, the kit was great. I, I, I'm just going to echo what Ben said, and you know they've been generous enough to give us a little bit of extra kit at the end of the year, and that kit is lovely as well. It's even better fitting for me um, okay nice which is I've really not good. been to bikes so I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, no and you know the gloves are great we've got them you know a little bit picky about gloves and really happy with with those the, yeah, the palm the on knee- those flex air glove is really good oh, yeah. God, <laughs> so good uh, um, <laughs> the only ones I didn't like were the ones with a little um, strap on the wrist Really, I like the, the Velcro ones. ones. I think that's the, the Ranger. Yeah, it's like a lower level on. one with a Velcro tap. Yeah, but you know, we're splitting hairs here, really. Um, the knee pads, mm. probably my favourite knee pads I've ever had. Um, they Fair. were yeah, they, they stay are very in good. place. I've I've done pedalling in them. Um, if you're pedalling and shorts are obviously better than trousers, but they were just. You know, really good, and the fact that you can take the um, the rubber bit off, mm. and give them a wash, and all of that, really good. Really happy with them. Just trying to remember. I think they're the launch D three O pad. I think that's right. Yeah. The um, the helmet was good. Tested it a couple of times. Yeah. Um, that was good. The um, it is a little difficult to clean. If I'm going to be picky. Hello. Um, Unfortunately, that was a concern this year. Um, so because the, the mug gets stuck in the yeah, like there's, there's the grills the, on the vents. There's grills, yeah. and um, which is good in a way, but yeah, yeah it makes the cleaning know, a bit trickier. Yeah, I bet all these people in sunny climates are like, I don't know what those mm. guys on the downtime podcast are talking <laughs> about. I have had no issues whatsoever. I wonder if you need an airline or something to like blow oh, it out yeah. of those. Yeah, don't know maybe. what the pros do. Yeah. Rich, I remember Rich saying that he used um, like cotton buds to go oh, go God. in like <laughs> one by one, to kind of I think to clean to clean it out. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's a bit. That's a He's bit. He's got much. too much time on his hands. Um, yeah, yeah. So I just, uh, looked, they, I just they, looked up the, the knee pads. It's the Launch Pro D three O. They are very good. Yeah. I had those for a year or two before the we did this project, and yeah, they've been my yeah. go to. Yeah, yeah, good pad. And I found the shoes actually have got. Um, um, they're quite tough around the outside, so I've, I've, you know, quite often I'll bash my feet into like the odd stump or something. And in other mm. shoes, I've ended up like with, um, you know, a bruised toe or something. And um, in these, um, they kind of offer just slightly more protection, so that's been good. However, yeah. they are not four month puppy proof. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah, you said you got one of them got eaten by a puppy. Yeah, I lost the Velcro not strap good. off one, which is not good. Oh, man. But given that he ate. You- most of my dinner this evening um it's it's a bit of a theme at the moment so those shoes were a bit of a grower for you did you weren't super convinced initially were you and then you like no i wasn't i them. think it's yeah it's like i, th- I don't know whether sometimes you, you know you're used to what you're used to running and then you, you get into something new and you're like you know oh, i don't like this it's new um whereas the more i got to 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 ride in them the like the just the more comfortable um i got and and uh, you know another little benefit was that ha- about halfway through ben and i we'd both been you know, we'd all been given like a set of clip shoes and a set of flat shoes and ben and i kind of like did a little trade and swapped our f- flats and clips respectively so we ended up with 
Ben, two sets of flats, me, two sets of clip shoes. You know, I think it was half a size difference or something. And that was really useful um, for the second half of the to season. To have a, a dry recent, set of shoes. To have a dry set of shoes. Um, yeah. It was really, really useful. So that should go on the lessons learned list, right? Two sets of Probably. shoes, two sets of yeah. gloves, and a set of wheels with mud mm. tires on are very, very good things to have. And we definitely didn't have wheels with mud mm. tires on. No, that would, have, that would have saved a lot of stress and a lot of but strain. You, it wouldn't have been as amusing for you to watch. No, true. So very true. You know. However, if I had been racing those two races, I would definitely have wanted wheels with mud tires on. Yeah, fair. A um, couple more bits. I we used ODI grips. A couple of us did anyway. Me and Ben. I used the Reflex in the end, which is their like vibration absorbing grip, which, I mean. I genuinely really like it's quite a fat grip I wouldn't normally run but now I've got the fork set up properly like I found those quite impressive like no arm pump but on pretty long runs at Dovey and stuff so they've been pretty good Ben what did you you brought you started off with the AG1 grips which yeah I didn't really I'm not a massive fan of they're a bit hard yeah I didn't get on with those either so then I think I've uh, I've moved on to the elite flow ones which are kind of uh they've got like a little they're knurled with like a kind of i don't know squares on to grip your fingers onto yeah oh yeah yeah, and yeah. They were... you should try the elite pro which is the next one up where it's got even more padding on the top side okay i quite those, like but... thin did you like yeah, yeah, yeah i like, like thin, thin minimal grips. yes so uh yeah i was dead happy with those I was thought thin was good for me, but I quite like as long as like the core's thin, and then having more padding, I'm kind of getting on with. So I don't know, maybe uh, I've changed my mind on some of that mm. stuff a little bit. Let's talk about the one that none of us really wanted to like, probably, and that's the Wahoo stuff. Like I don't think any mountain biker that's true to themselves really wants to shout about sitting in the garage on a turbo trainer. Um, however. <laughs> And we've mentioned it on pretty much all the episodes, I think. It became quite uh, an integral part of all of our training to a greater or lesser extent. Um, Johnny, maybe we'll start with you. I think you were probably the biggest convert. Like I'd been using one for a year or so and found it found it pretty handy and liked the, the, um, the ecosystem, I guess, that they've created with some of the tools. But I think you were, you were pretty blown away in the end. I was... Um... You know, when it rocked up, I was like, I can't believe they're giving us this and I can't believe I'm not going to use it. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, I was like, well, I, well, given they've given it to us, <clears throat> I'll give it a go. And then, you know, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I was like, oh, you know, you know, so I had to go and delve into, you know, what was on offer and what have you. And then got into it a bit more and then committed to doing a program. And now I'm I am a such a fan like a Wahoo fanboy almost. It's um, a it's, Wahoo uh, to, to, I think to, they call those. Yeah, to to the point where, you know, they were generous enough to give us this, you know, not just the kit, but the subscription to the online thing. And, you know, it ran out in November. Um, yeah, you both I, messaged me like, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> messaged you and said, it's, it's run out. Um, I, I subsequently found out that they do, um, you, you know, every, every month they, offer you know some programs for free but they're like all the like suffer fest stuff um like the really <laughs> the really hard the really hard horrible stuff bits, yeah. so um i ended up doing a couple of those until they the nicely gave us an update to the subscription um and it was quite funny because you know ben obviously said that he was oh it's a shame it's run out because i was going to do the, the 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 fitness test and i was like oh don't worry that's still <laughs> free <laughs> 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 so uh, um no i yeah i am just it's a slick bit of kit and um for um um time poor people it's it is really good because you can you know you can literally just you know jump on do your 45 minute 60 minute wh whatever you want and be done and then they'll they'll build a whole program with you so you know i'm quite looking forward to january where i'm going to set up another program for three months and um and you know crack on with that really so it's <sighs> Reluctantly, pleasantly surprised, I think is um, my, uh, <laughs> my view. It's the, I, th I think it's the ability for it to create quite 
like bespoke programs based off your input that's quite is maybe the most impressive thing I mean, like the trainer itself the turbo trainer is really good works really well it's straightforward it's simple to use it's not it, it's not know, noisy and all of that it's not <clears> noisy <throat> etc well that's really good great but the thing the thing that really sets it aside is that you can go in and say right i want to get better at this for this discipline i've got this much time and it goes away and creates a a really good like varied interesting program for you which then subsequently seems to work which is i think it's pretty impressive ben how have you got on with it you probably like you're the person that rides outside more i would say than me and johnny but yeah so like setting up programs is a bit i don't really get into that because i'd maybe only okay. find one or two slots a week where i could engage with that so i'd be like missing quite a bit because mm -hmm. I'd go out and ride. No, you can tell it how much spare time you want. You, oh, anyway, yeah, you can wind I it think, down. Um, right? But actually, even at the lowest level, it probably does give you more than two yeah. sessions a week. Um, I think over the winter, I'll, I mean, I used it on and off. I used it quite a bit early last year. Uh, and then in the mm -hmm. summer, I was using it to do like, like you can, it, you don't need a program, but it'll set you like, a progression set of intervals to do that so you can look at yeah. specific areas you want to focus on and it'll give you maybe a set of things to work work your way through so i did a few of those um <clears throat> i mm. think i will well i'm i'm intending to whether i do or not i'm intending to just sit <laughs> on it a lot and grind away uh at zone two this winter because that's what you two boys tell me that i should be doing um <laughs> and uh, good for health. well you know <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> wait, wait for wait for one of the coaches that Chris speaks to yeah, a lot tell to tell us, us that we're doing completely yeah, the wrong yeah. thing. Um, <laughs> uh, I've got a few things, <coughs> Chris <Yeah>. Murray. <laughs> I've got a couple of things I'd like to do next year, where a bit of endurance would be beneficial. Um, so okay, so that I'll, I'll be using it for that. But like Johnny Johnny says, it's amazing. It's just there if it's pouring down with rain, you can just go and hop on it for an hour instead of going out in the in the filth and then having to spend as long cleaning up after as you did actually riding um it's super convenient um and it does feel i think for me it at least gives me there's options there to give me enough structure to actually get on with something meaningful rather than just having this bit of kit that i don't really know how to use effectively yeah um so yeah, they're true. like the support yeah. that's there with the software etc is really really good god damn they can they cut down on some of the some of the number of apps that you need i've got about six wahoo apps i can never remember <laughs> which one which one's needed which one? for which um that's maybe I my own criticism like, system now it covers pretty much all of the programmy stuff and then the element one is the one to like use with your bike computer to connect the wahoo right. element computers in i think they're the only two you need pretty sure you can do away with any others now I'll uh, cleanse my phone. Might a bit. be wrong. Yeah, do a bit of cleansing. Yeah. Any other kit that we've missed out? Well, obviously, the uh, the jet wash got a lot of use. That was very handy. Um, yeah. Was uh, works components? Shout out works yeah. components. Definitely multiple batteries required if, you, if there's more than one of you, and more than one water butt required mm. if there's more than one of you. But that was that was a godsend given muddy races and trying to keep the bikes as clean as possible. Yeah. Um, through the weekend, I just, I, I, you know, I just bought it on a whim. I was like, you know what, I, you know, it might be a good idea to have a jet wash. And it was, I think it was 125 pounds. I think, and to be honest, that's yeah. probably the best 125 pounds <laughs> I spent. It's a bit lost without that. <laughs> yeah, super yeah. handy. Yeah, they're good bits of kit. Anything else you can think I don't of? I think so. No, I think really like socks. The fox socks. Mm. You were a bit, yeah, you keep going on about the fox socks. Uh, it's I'm, the Marino, I'm partial the to a good set ones, of, right? Uh, yeah, I'm partial to a good set of socks. I think, yeah. you know, ben, Benoit and I are actually connoisseurs oh, yeah. of And they socks, are good socks. So yeah. They are <laughs> good, good socks. socks. Yeah. Good. Well, well done, yeah. Fox. Your socks are good. Sh fox so what socks. About shout out my, fox shout out my folding rocks. travel stool. That's an essential bit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. I forgot for the last round. Pre-race. Yeah. Pre Pre-race toilet usage, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Excellent. So where do we go from here, boys? Do we want to do more racing? Do you, are you keen? Like we've dipped our toe, I would say, in the, in the UK for, downhill for racing. For William. For William. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come along and uh, like put your bikes back together after you've smashed them <laughs> through the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about Fort William. I'd be intrigued to ride it for sure. I'm not sure if a race is the place that I want yeah. to do that. I don't know. It would be cool though, because it's the closest in the UK. I don't think they quite route exactly as the World Cup. I think it misses out maybe a couple of the, <laughs> That's all right. like the road gap and <laughs> things. But like it's the closest you'd get to saying you'd ridden like a World Cup level track in the UK. Yeah. Um it's, I'm not totally anti it. I'm quite anti it. It's uh, it's not really it's not really fitting in with there's only one, only one uh, domestic race there next year, isn't there? By the looks of things, and it's on a bank holiday weekend. Yeah, unless we get you a jersey. Get me a jersey? Mm, no, let's not do that. <laughs> Too old, mate. <laughs> Never gonna happen. Uh, but would would we like to do more downhill racing? I I feel like I've got a bit of unfinished business. Like I never put down a run that I was in any way happy with at any of those rounds. So I, I feel like I've learned enough to hopefully come back and do a better job of that. Yeah, I'm game. <laughs> definitely uh, yeah I'm really game <laughs> yep I think we've all got unfinished business so more yeah yeah more down think, your bike time I think as as well it's like you know you you've got to figure out what the racing is again like it you know I felt like this year you, we you know we turned up and it's like well you know what's the scene like you know how fast are people riding what are the tracks like what are the bikes like you know it was really only towards the end of the season that we're like okay you know you know I think I know what we're doing. It's almost like we didn't do enough races, mm. really. You know, the only yeah, way to get yeah, better yeah, at yeah. racing is more racing. So, you know, I think it's this kind of like, you know, we, we said, we're, we're, you know, racing against guys who've done this for, you know, they've not had like 20 years off from racing mountain bikes uh, downhill. So, uh, you know, they're really, really, really good. So if you want to, you know, race them and do as well as you can, you need to do more racing. So um, I'm keen, I, you know, and I like the, I like having that goal um, to to work towards and the the focus and uh, something else to think about in your head as well, which is good. Yeah, for sure. I struggle to do like I enjoy gym work and I enjoy riding, but I struggle to do that consistently without something in the calendar that I know I've got to like be ready for. So I'm definitely keen to get something in there, uh, one or two rounds, maybe more. Um, so yeah, we'll just sit on tens of hooks waiting for Pierce to announce mm-hmm. their 2024 mm-hmm. calendar and see if we can uh, get support from brands at a time that is pretty challenging, right? There's a lot of riders out there without contracts. There's a lot of teams that won't be at races. It's definitely a different, um, yeah, a different place to the mountain bike industry that we went to a year and a half ago to see if they'd be kind enough to help us out with some bikes and some kit, and they were. But actually, on a positive note, there's not really anything wrong with what we've got, right? We'd need some, you know, some more brake pads, some more tires, that kind of like expendable stuff. But there's now wrong with the bikes and the vast majority of stuff that we've got, right? It's uh, no, we're pretty keep, good to keep go. Running so. the same equipment, got what we need. Yeah. All right. Well, watch this space then. But yeah, thanks, boys. It's been. Um, a lot of fun watching you from the <laughs> sidelines, <laughs> but a really cool thing to be part of. Not quite what I imagined it would turn into when I set out at the start of the year, but I'm super stoked with how it's turned out. It's been ace to hear from loads of people that have been following it and have enjoyed listening to the series. Um, we've got at least one more episode coming in the new year to talk about like the improvement side. I think we're going to try and get on one of the... Um, wahoo uh, sports science experts to cover a few of those bits and pieces and chat a bit about that i've recorded an episode the other night with geordie which uh, i'm sure johnny will be uh, listening to why, intently why can't, I, why can't i participate in these episodes because you know I, I feel as if i have questions <laughs> okay well so we'll set you up some time with geordie um yeah so there's a couple of those people keep an eye out for those yeah thanks to everyone that supported the series throughout the year it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun hopefully we'll be back in 2024 for a bit more but uh until then and even if we're not let's we'll get on some uh, uplift big, days a big shout out to our significant others for putting up with the uh, time away racing i really appreciated it very Second true hat. yeah as with as with all of these things like life uh, 
life's a balance, right? And if you've got things you want to do, then you've got to find ways to make that work in whatever environment you live in, whether that's with work or family or other halves and stuff. So yeah, thanks to people that have been patient with us disappearing halfway across or up or down the country for various bits and bobs, mostly for falling off and uh, <laughs> then being useless for weeks afterwards. But yeah, nice one, boys. It's been a lot of fun. I look forward to spending hopefully more time actually on track mm -hmm. with you next year. Um, and yeah, and we'll see where this little project goes in the, in the future. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Cool. Thank you.